It's the Monday after protest weekend in America. And because it was protest weekend in America, stuff went bananas and the internet freaked out. Now, I'm... I was all ready to do my response to the Mortal Kombat 11 stuff, but that's going to have to wait until Wednesday because I got to do the BuzzFeed nonsense tomorrow and the nonsense I'm going to talk about today, today, because people are freaking out and I, I can't, I tried, but I can't effectively summarize my thoughts in a tweet There's more to this to unpack. There is more nuance. And I got sick and tired of people just making things worse by combating, you know, left-wing partisan hackery with right-wing partisan hackery. And nobody was having any sort of nuance in the whole discussion. And I'm like, yeah, it's protest weekend in America, which is like Shark Week, only in real freaking life. I don't know. I'm sure people start screaming at me about the First Amendment and all that stuff. Um, God, I got to do one of those this week too, the free speech stuff. <laughs> um, but, uh, and it's really freaking cold here. Uh, the patrons will hear more about how freaking cold it is. If you want to hear what life is like on Hoth, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Now's a really good time to become a patron because, uh, I'm going to do something with the patrons for my birthday. Something, somehow, not sure what. Uh, I want to do it this way because um, I want it to just be fun and making it sort of open to everybody means someone guaranteed goes in there and is obnoxious and make everyone uncomfortable and then I have to play referee and I don't want to do that for my birthday thing. I just want to have a bit of fun. That's happening next month. So if you, you know, sign up this month and get processed and all these things at the beginning of the month, you'll be ready for the fun. I'm thinking maybe making it a PJ party, doing like game streaming in PJs. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll, it'll something be fun. I mean, the last time we did sort of an impromptu web stream was where the based cabbage thing came from. What does that mean? Uh, for people who weren't there, it was me playing Dead or Alive Extreme three fortune and uh i was playing um helena was the character i chose and she got gifted a whole cabbage and so i had her eat it and then all the concussive blasts um uh, that that ensued because of volleyball were extra funny because it was like all these hot bikini chicks were farting like concussive farts it was good times but i'm stalling about talking about this stuff. And I'm, I'm going to try to do this without showing um, faces. And that's going to be really, really difficult because they're all through this article. And I will explain why I am not um, showing faces. It is relevant. And part of it is my... Um, Uh, I have to be consistent in how I apply ethical things. I was critical of Louis C.K. for going after high school students in his comedy routine because I think they're too young to be, uh, you know, uh, the the targets of that much derision, that high profile. Um, And I feel the same way about these high school students that are in the hot seat right now. Uh, I'm talking about the Catholic school to investigate taunting of Native Americans. This is a much more neutral headline than it was yesterday or a couple days ago. Um, I am going to fade back in and scroll down past anything with uh, a high school student's face in it. Because I don't want to show the faces of high school students. I'm going to explain why in a bit. Uh, But the story goes, uh, some students wearing Make America Great Again hats and clothing appeared to surround and may have taunted a Native American troupe as it performed the American Indian Movement song about strength and courage. It's not clear which of those young people surrounding the Native Americans are students of Covington Catholic High School in Covington, Kentucky. There appears to have been jeering by another group of people preceding the incident caught on video. But 
The Diocese of Covington criticized any students who participated in the action, which broke out as a group from the school was in Washington for the anti-abortion event March for Life. Yes, you heard that right. The school, the Catholic all-boys school, took students to the March for Life on a sort of field trip. It was on the weekend, so it wasn't during school time, but... More on that in a bit. Um, they're they're saying the male was not identified, who's who's prominent in the video, and I I gotta call BS on that because his face and his likely school are all over the place. People get doxxed with less information. That's just disingenuous. Um, so what happened? Because I'm not gonna show the video. Um, during the incident, some young people appeared to surround Native Americans and others started to jump and chant. What they don't also describe is that they were also doing tomahawk chops, which... Uh, okay. Uh, one young person is heard saying the Native American song, This is Deep. It's sarcastic. The, that, that's sort of the important thing. Um, Phillips, the Native American man who was surrounded by this group... Uh, said he approached the group of students after witnessing them going back and forth with a group known as Black Hebrew Israelites. Some people say that they were responding to uh, homophobic comments from this group. Um, I didn't see that particular bit. I saw another video where the where other people from the Indigenous Peoples March were. Uh, getting in these kids' faces, saying, go back to Europe, this is our land, that kind of stuff. So um, it's it's not as innocent as this portrayal is is showing, but it does not change that they they these high school students were being little snots while a uh, uh, an indigenous elder who was a I read somewhere he's also a war veteran. I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on that. But um, he was doing a song for peace. He describes it himself as, um, where is it? Uh, Phillips said the students, Phillips is the guy again who got surrounded, said the students surrounded the significantly smaller group as participants of the Indigenous People's March watched on the sideline, drumming and praying to God to help end the march on a positive note. Phillips said he was approached he approached the rivaling groups in hopes of defusing the situation. Uh, look at my America. Look at my black and white brothers here. They're tearing at each other. We are at a point where you can't stand by and watch this. Um, Phillips told NBC News that some of the young people surrounding him chanted support for President Trump's proposal to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, chance of build the wall and other things that were even worse, he said as he stood in the rain in Washington. They were brought up to believe I'm less than human. Um, uh, what does a border wall to keep out migrant, like, asylum seekers uh, and illegal immigrants have to do with Native Americans? Native Americans were here first. I don't expect any of this to make sense, but I, I'm just pointing this out. Stupid is stupid. It doesn't make sense. But of course, here we go, because this became an internet thing. The elder said he's getting hateful phone calls and is afraid to answer his phone in the wake of the incident, which came nearly a week after Trump mocked U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren's claim to have a Native American ancestry. Nearly a week after Trump mocked again. Um, he says, I'm still trying to process it, who they were, who those young folks were, where they came from, and who's bringing them up. Where were the chaperones? How did this come to this point? It's going to take us all to come together, he added. I'm about prayer, and then you have to have some action to go with it. He said... Uh, on Sunday, Phillips said he doesn't know if the boy in the video should be expelled from school, but said the trip chaperone should be fired. Where were they? How did they allow these students to come to this point after an hour of this happening? Were they with them? Were they encouraging them? Um, and uh, that, I think, I, I gotta give uh, credit 
to this guy, Nathan Phillips. Canadians are going, what? Nathan Phillips? No, not that Nathan Phillips, guys. Is in Nathan Phillips Square. This this indigenous man was named Nathan is named Nathan Phillips. Um, I think he's got the right handle on this and that all these culture warriors go back going back and forth trying to blame the quote unquote other side um and this is precisely why i am not showing the faces of these high school students because they are high school students i was rough on louis ck for going after high school students i am gonna be rough on the people attacking these kids and you know youth i know we're supposed to call them youth but i'm sorry even if they're seniors and they're 18 years old, having been 18 years old and being like over double that now, you are a kid. You don't know shit yet. And that's important because you can't be expected to know shit. Um, the, the Nathan Phillips, the, the man who was doing the uh, drumming, he has, he has the wisdom of being older and he correctly identifies that the adults... The full grown ass adults that put these kids in this situation are the ones who are primarily at fault. Don't go after them. Blur the faces of these kids. And I, I, you know, I want to call them little pukes because at this at this point they are behaving like little pukes. But this is precisely why you don't bring high schoolers to a protest. If you want, if parents want to bring their kids as, as family time and it's one-on-one -on -one supervision, that's your call. I wouldn't do it. I think that the sort of innocence of, of uh, you know, young life, should be preserved as long as possible. But if it's one-on-one, -on -one, there's a very different dynamic. And the reason that I am pointing out that they are teenagers is, is important because it is developmentally very, very important. And I am not pulling up boys will be boys here. This is true of teenagers, no matter what their gender. We know based on solid adolescent development science that one thing teenagers are far more vulnerable to than alleged grown ass adults is peer pressure. They, all, all their good judgment, all their good sense, all their survival skills go out the freaking window when, when there's adrenaline and excitement and their, their friends are being idiots. It's like, I want to be an idiot too. Um, you know, that old, I don't even know if millennials know this thing back in, back when I was a kid, it was always, if Bobby jumped off a bridge, would you, the, I don't know if they do that anymore. Um, I think now it's Bobby's mother says that bridge is unsafe. Don't go there with Bobby. Uh, that was a joke. Uh, but we know, we know one of the big challenges in literally stopping adolescents from getting themselves killed in adolescence so they can make it to adulthood is the fact that they are very impressionable in um, hive mind or groupthink situations when a lot of their friends are going, yeah, 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 do it. They set aside their good sense. There, there are reasons for it um, that I'm not going to get into now because I, I'd have to read up on it specifically so I don't butcher it. Um, but it, it basically has to do with um, working in groups being essential to um, humans thriving as a species. And so that sense of belonging being an incredibly important part of adolescent development says the the gamer chick uh who who never felt like she belonged didn't think that's probably a good thing in the long run but here's why it was a good thing because in in high school I went to a rougher than usual sort of high school we didn't get into this kind of trouble because it was a um it was a predominantly black neighborhood and so the the adolescent boys that I grew up with were subjected to the talk, um, which was basically, you know, 
uh, when you are out in public and you are dealing with anyone in any sort of position of authority, um, yes, sir, no, sir, what do you need me to do, sir? Uh, part of it is to keep uh, adolescent boys from not getting shot by the cops. But the other part of it is that black parents identify that even if it's a group of kids and all the the white kids are are misbehaving, the perception is that everybody's going to see the black boy first. That's the perception. And so these boys are taught, don't act out. Even if you see everybody else doing something stupid, you don't. Because you're my responsibility. You're the one I care about. I want you to come home. You know, I don't want you to make it to the age of 25. Um, and uh, that that's a complicated thing because that leads to a building resentment in black adolescents that is this sore point that we don't have a chance to talk about here. Um, but... It's, it's a different issue because these kids are white skinned and they go to an all Catholic boys school. You know, they're these poster kids for privilege, but that doesn't mean they're not teenagers. And this is why I won't show their faces. Um, these, these, these school organizers who brought these kids to a protest this is this was a predictable result because protests are about um, provocative behaviors. A lot of the more right leaning people on Twitter who were trying to defend these kids were like they were provoked. They were provoked. Well, this is one of these kids like what you tell black boys. I don't care if you're provoked. I care about you. And it's almost like we need to start giving all kids the talk that way which is not the way equality is supposed to go but we're in the age of the tail wagging the dog more on that tomorrow um these kids these teens should never have been in that situation precisely because they are more malleable in terms of their behavior they are more likely to react when provoked they are more likely to get whipped up by the adrenaline and the provocation and just the stuff that's in the air and act like little idiots i mean that's what being a teenager is for you you pen teenagers up to an extent so they can act like little idiots and learn limits without you know, life ruining consequences. And unfortunately, I'm a bit, I'm more than a bit concerned that somebody is going to reveal the identity of these young people precisely because um, the, the First Nations elder, Nathan Phillips, is obviously got docked. Somebody got a hold of his phone and people are screaming at him and these things escalate. So some other, you know, group of hacktivists are going to get a, going to find out who these kids are and they're, they're going to dox them because it always goes back and forth. This always goes tit for tat. It always escalates. And I think we should respect what Nathan Phillips is saying, which is again, just read it. It's going to take us all to come together. I'm about prayer, but then you have to have some action to go with it. Meaning, you know, don't, don't do this. You know, be better. Forget be best. Be better. Okay. Be best has become a joke and it drives me crazy. Um, I know nobody's going to listen to me. I know this is going to escalate, but I just want to, um, uh, try to inject some nuance into this, try to point out that these are high school kids. And it's interesting because I talked to my husband about this and I told him what was going on and he went, ah, they were being little jerks. They knew better. And I said to him, you know, did your friends know better when they did something very similar? They gave people a hard time because of their ethnicity back in the day, stories he's told me about with a chuckle. And he says, well, I didn't do that. I said, but your friends did. And some of these kids, they're caught on camera just for standing there. How is that different? And he says, well, it's not. The difference is that he was in a situation where the only people that could, you know, 
condemn these kids for their behavior are the parents and the parents of their friends. In this case, these teenagers are subjected to the spotlight of the national news media. They are being publicly shamed for being little idiot jerks the way teenagers have been little idiot jerks as long as there's been teenagers. As long as that adolescent period of human development has existed, teenagers gonna be little idiot jerks. Boys and girls alike, girls do it differently than boys. That's all. Everybody does it. Maybe not trans kids, because trans kids are the, usually the ones getting picked on, but I'm sure they can be little assholes in their own way. Teenagers are little assholes, period, end of story. We cannot expect them to be anything else. Even the best teenager. I was a pretty good teenager because I was picked on for numerous reasons and I grew up in a really tough area. Um, even I could be a little jerk at times. It's just part of being a teenager. You're still learning what, you know, the complexities of right and wrong. You're, you, you think something's right. You, you do something because in the moment it feels right because it's feel good it feels good and afterwards you realize it was wrong because you don't like the consequences of what you did. That's the only way to learn. Now, we had a very serious case of public shaming leading to a young woman's suicide up here in Canada. Her name is was Retea Parsons. She was... Uh, Bad things happened to her. I'm not going to get into it, but it wasn't the initial bad things. You can look it up if you want. Uh, it wasn't the bad things that drove her to take her own life. It was the public shaming afterwards, the fact that she couldn't get away from it is what did it, which is why in the wake of her dying by suicide, um... And this video is automatically going to get demonetized because I'm talking about this. Um, but uh, it, the laws that, that they tried to put on the books in, uh, in the Maritimes, where she was from, had to do with, with cyberbullying and the forwarding of intimate images, not, uh, you know, not anything about sex crimes or anything like that. It was the harassment after the fact that this poor girl couldn't take. Now, I'm not going to make that benevolently sexist mistake and assume that boys that age are more resilient than girls that age. They're not. They just process things differently. Different things are expected of them. They're supported and not supported in different ways. If these young men's names get out there and they are harassed in a similar way, then there could be horrible and tragic consequences and I don't want that and that's why I'm making this video and that's why I'm being deadly serious about this despite my tendency to joke about everything gets me into trouble um but uh yeah we need to keep in mind that these kids despite the MAGA hats despite you know them them looking grown they aren't. It's, especially nowadays, it's really difficult to tell the difference between, you know, a 16-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a, and a 21-year-old in some cases. Those are big years. I don't even believe that at 18, I, I remember what I was like at 18, man, those years between like 18 and, and 24, even 18 and 28, like that decade, those are big years. And I, I really do believe that we are not going to produce resilient adults if teenagers can't test their limits, act like little idiots, and not be subjected to life-ruining consequences with the caveat that nothing these guys did was violent. If this had turned violent, it'd be whatever, you did, you did the adult crime, you do the time. Teenager at that age, no violence is wrong. There is no excuse for that. But the point is, these kids were just little jerks. They weren't, they weren't violent. And I think that the, the national attention on this is not, um, 
is not in keeping with how newsworthy the story really was. Asshole teenagers are assholes. Film at 11 never makes it on the news. The reason this became newsworthy is because they were wearing MAGA hats and they were doing things that appeared racist. And that connection, this this idea of the Trump contagion effect was what is considered newsworthy. And I am not I am not persuaded by that any more than I am persuaded that these kids were just little innocent victims and they were provoked. They did nothing wrong. No, they they acted like little jerks and letting them off the hook completely teaches them nothing. But I don't really know how you discipline these kids in a way that is proportional anymore because it's national news. This is going to be a real challenge. Um, yikes. Uh, yeah, I'm actually probably going to consult with, uh, some, some counselor, uh, colleagues of mine to figure this one out because I, I don't know how, you know, you don't want to do nothing, but the embarrassment of this might be punishment enough. I don't know. Tough parenting call here. Um, I think there's a tendency to over punish boys. Um, and, you know, going, going back to that, that stuff I said about, you know, the wanting to keep young black men alive long enough to become full-fledged black men, um, there's this tendency to sort of over punish, uh, out, out of fear. And that doesn't lead to good outcomes. Uh, someone left a comment, uh, on, the video I did about the Gillette ad yesterday about um, they 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 said they consider themselves an anti-feminist, um, but they can actually watch my videos, which is you know saying a lot. And yay, that makes me happy. Somebody who kind of fundamentally disagrees with a lot of stuff, we have common ground. That's the goal. But um, you know, one of one of the things that leads to this sort of bitterness, this you know, feminism is bullshit, is that the world just crushes guys for the slightest mistake in the way it doesn't crush girls because we coddle girls more. Science has shown this. This is how social programming happens. Now, neither is correct. We have to have um, the punishment fit the crime sort of thing. You, you have to be um, benevolent in your punishments or you teach if, if you under punish you teach kids the, kids the wrong lessons if you over punish if you're too rough on them all it does is is makes them resent you this is why corporal punishment fell out of vogue this is why we don't beat kids anymore it doesn't work it doesn't teach them anything um so yeah this, this was a massive overreaction, again, because I think they were trying to push other stories out of the headlines. More on that tomorrow. But um, I just wanted to make this video because I saw the feeding frenzy online, and I just want to say that's not okay. The indigenous elder who was at the center of this doesn't want that. It's not helping those teenagers to turn this into a massive thing prone to escalation and crucifying these young men just because they happen to be young white men from a Catholic private school, all boys school, that's not right either. Because, you know, is that just? Is treating a human being as a thing just because they happen to be white men just? No. And that doesn't mean you, you don't, you have to agree or or you know hand wave away what they did i don't i've called them how many times i call them little idiots in this video i think it's pretty clear what i think of their behavior but they are teenagers and let he she or they who was not a little idiot as a teenager cast the first stone and if you don't think you were a little idiot this is really mixing metaphors here. I, I go from, you know, biblical stuff to, to, to Socrates. 
if you don't think you were a little idiot, you are probably a massive idiot because everyone was a little idiot when they were a teenager. 